in 1994, Hewlett Packard made one of the most powerful handheld computers of that decade, the legendary HP 200LX. As powerful as a full desktop from the early 1980s, this was a highly capable computer in a form factor the size of a phone. I didn't even know this existed until I started watching awesome retro tech videos right here on YouTube. I think this is probably because this was made more as a business tool than a regular high profile consumer device such as the Apple Newton. These were often purchased in large quantities by companies for their staff. And they became such a useful tool in the business world, there were even custom model variants made for specific companies. In this video, I'm going to explore this machine and see what can it really do. And that means I'm going to push this right up to its limits. If you happen to recognize what's playing on the screen here, then let me know in the comments. I'll get to this later in the video. But for a quick hint, think of a film from 1994. As I read and learn about this machine online, it reminds me of the Nokia N900, another pocket computer, but from 15 years later, that also has a highly dedicated fan base. Turning it on shows the HP splash screen. The keyboard is more than usable. It's got its own numeric keypad, a row of function keys, and there's even a row of dedicated buttons for the most important apps including all the organizer functions, such as the phone book and the calendar. And of course, it's got dedicated buttons for Lotus 1, 2, 3 and Quicken that really makes this device the professional tool that it is. The final button in this section brings up the launcher and this shows all the built-in apps. This screen supports the CGA graphics standard. This screen is an impressive high density LCD with 640 by 200 pixels and four shades of gray. There's no backlight though, but in a well-lit environment, the screen looks really good. The CPU is an Intel 80186. It's not a very common CPU, but running at 7.19 megahertz, this is more than enough to run MS-DOS 5.0 and most of the applications that are supported on this hardware. There are some differences from a regular PC compatible. For example, there's a somewhat non-standard BIOS. This can't boot from external drives. It can only boot MS-DOS 5.0 that's included in the ROM. But the BIOS does give the option to use a custom config.sys and autoexec.bat, which can be stored in a RAM disk. Pressing Control alt delete does reboot the system as expected, but it's possible to crash the system so hard that Control alt delete has no effect. In these cases, you need to press Control shift on to get out of those sticky situations. Apart from these sorts of differences, this is a highly compatible MS-DOS based PC, which can run thousands of MS-DOS apps. But to free up extra memory for some of the more demanding MS-DOS apps, it can be a good idea to exit the launcher completely. I can now run software such as Check It. I find though that the menu is a little bit hard to see. I think this is from the way the 16 colors in CGA mode is being mapped to the four grayscales on this screen. But Check It shows us this is a highly compatible, highly capable MS-DOS computer. The BIOS also includes a test mode. Powering on by holding Escape and pressing On brings up an internal test menu. This gives us the option to test various aspects of the hardware. There is a comprehensive user manual that tells us everything we need to know about this amazing machine. I'm pleased the user manual includes a section called What About Games? This describes the two inbuilt games that come with the 200LX. 
But of course, this is an MS-DOS computer, and it can run just about any game compatible with the CGA graphics. Which means it's time to run some games. And the first game I'm trying here is Stunt Car Racer. This is an old favourite and a really fun game. This game is very playable and a lot of fun, but it does show us some of the limitations of this LCD. There's quite a lot of smearing of the graphics as the response time is not that great. The next game I'm going to play is the slower paced, but just as enjoyable, Eye of the Beholder. This is probably one of my favourite games of all time. It's better to play it with a mouse, but it can be played with a keyboard. It's absolutely amazing that this game from the early 90s was playable on a handheld from 1994. Having one of these in the 90s must have been amazing, with this sort of capability that you'd carry around in your pocket. To really push this system, I'm going to try some scene demos. I'm not expecting a great result here. Scene demos usually take advantage of hardware to the max. The non-standard aspects of this computer might be a difficult challenge. This CGA demo, for example, has something on the screen and does have music, but there should also be scrolling text and other graphical effects on screen according to the screenshots. Other demos I tried didn't even run. Some of these could be because they're trying to use VGA graphics, which are not supported on here. Others I don't know. They just crash the system so badly that I need to do more than just Control alt delete I have to do a full Control shift on to restart the system. But the ones that do run are impressive. Demos made for a 4.77 MHz 8088, for example, run much faster on this CPU. Screen size also appears to be an issue. Demos that want to run in 320x400 will only show half the screen. One awesome demo that runs well on here is 8088 Corruption. This demo plays full screen video in CGA text mode graphics at all frame rates. Unfortunately, it needs a sound card and color CGA graphics to really shine, but I love that it runs on this palm top. This is what was playing in the intro. If I play the video alongside, you can now see what it was trying to do earlier. Our records show that every ship which has approached the ribbon has either been destroyed or severely damaged. Scene demos on here are a great way to demonstrate the capabilities of this system. But it's the dedicated coders that made software directly for this hardware that's also really impressive. This video player, for example, does an even better job at playing video that's recognisable on this screen. It may only be about 12 frames per second and run in a small window, but if you know what this is, it's easy to recognise, and there's even one bit sound playing through the PC speaker. it would actually be possible to follow the story if you were dedicated and crazy enough to watch the whole episode. Storage is always an issue on these HP palm tops. The unit I have here has one megabyte of built-in memory. In general, 640K is all you're ever gonna need, with the extra memory being allocated to a RAM disk. There are third-party memory expansions available to increase the built-in memory as seen here on the dedicated Palm Top YouTube channel. It's very difficult to find any of these spare parts though. And so storage is often expanded using the built-in PCMCIA slot. I'm using a compact flash to PCMCIA adapter. And this provides an easy and convenient way to copy software onto this Palm Top. One of the difficulties though is finding cards that are compatible with the 200LX. Smaller cards like 16 or 32 megabytes are usually compatible, but go bigger than that and you're gonna to start to have trouble to find cards that will work in here. I had to search through a large number of cards to find some that would work in here. 
and it's a good idea to use the HP's built-in FDisk100 command. This can make some cards work that I couldn't get to work even when formatting them properly on another computer. Using this method, I was even able to get this 16 megabyte SD card inside this SD to compact flash adapter working. I was even able to get a 128 megabyte micro SD card inside a micro SD to SD adapter, inside an SD to compact flash adapter, inside the compact flash to PCMCIA adapter to work. There's also a driver that can be installed that can enable even higher capacity cards to work. I did find going above 128 megabytes did tend to slow the file system down a bit. This card slot can be used for much more though, such as Ethernet or Wi-Fi adapters for full networking abilities, with some limitations. Only 16-bit cards will work, with a maximum power draw of up to 150 milliamps. This makes it very difficult to find cards that are compatible with this system. That still leaves the possibility of a lot of things like parallel port cards or SCSI cards. The card I want to try in this video is something special in its own right. This is a Rex PDA, the smallest personal digital assistant of the 90s and possibly of all time. And thanks to the dedicated fan base of this HP, there is software available to sync your contacts, calendar and even notes from your HP directly to the Rex. For this test, I'm syncing entire chapters from a book to make the world's smallest and most impractical ebook reader that I can carry around in my wallet. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I'd like to thank one of my patrons for sending this amazing machine to me. I finally achieved my goal of having a PDA inside a PDA. If you decide to watch more videos on this channel in the future, consider one day giving something to help things along. I've been expanding options to help people support the channel, from Patreon to Super Thanks, and now even memberships. There will be more videos about unusual or interesting hardware coming up, and I hope that you stick around for that. Until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.